Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article on the M70 main battle tank by Andrew Hills. Before we begin, we would like to thank our patrons for their support that allows us to keep expanding our website. In 1962, the U.S. Armor Association launched a competition for the design of a new generation of main battle tank to replace the M60 gun tank in light of advanced Soviet vehicles which were being developed. The goal was to gather ideas as to how people thought the tanks of 1965 to 1975 might look and left various designers a lot of freedom in terms of armament and propulsion. Many designs were sent in from around the world, but one very close to home came from a U.S. soldier named David Bredemeyer, based out of Fort Knox, the home of the U.S. School of Armor at the time. This design was to eschew conventional suspension, layout, and armament, and produce a missile carrier capable of destroying any future Soviet vehicle. Named the M70 without any connection to the MBT-70, presumably for the anticipated in-service date, this vehicle provides a semi-professional glimpse at some of the thinking of the era. Section 1. Layout. The basic layout of the M70 was a long slender tank. The engine, a long slender gas turbine, was positioned alongside the driver at the front. The turbine would power the transmission mounted at the front. Section 2. Armament. The M70 was not to be a conventional gun tank. Bredemeyer eschewed the conventional cannon approach for his design and put the offensive capability for the tank in the hands of the anti-tank guided missile. This design choice was based upon the logic that it would be able to fire before an enemy tank could and to ensure a first round hit each time. The result was that the tank was to carry eight batteries of anti-tank guided missiles in each fender, the sponsors along each side above the tracks. As the missiles traveled slower than a conventional shell, they could be fired in the general direction of the enemy without even aiming, with this process then being picked up by the means of the guidance system as the vehicle stopped. There would then be time to guide the missile onto its target before the corresponding enemy tank had had time to stop, aim, and fire its main gun. Another launcher was retained in a rotatable turret at the back of the vehicle, and between 50 and 60 missiles could be carried. Storage was facilitated for them as their fins were all spring-loaded to fold down. Of these 50 to 60 missiles, 20 were to be stored in the turret. Various types of missiles were proposed, including smoke, chemical, heat-seeking, and even atomic rounds, guaranteeing these missiles were capable of taking on even the heaviest of enemy armor. The heat-seeking missiles also enabled the tank to counter enemy aircraft, and it could track them itself, too, with a built-in onboard radar. A machine gun was mounted on the commander's cupola. Section 3. Crew The M70 was to use a three-man crew, consisting of a commander, gunner, and driver, although the gunner also served as a radar operator. When the gunner was busy loading the missile tube, the commander could take over his duties. Of the three crew, the driver would be sat at the front, leaving the commander and gunner in the turret at the back. The gunner sat on the left, would be able to operate the missile launch tube centrally as well as the radar, and when he was otherwise engaged, the commander could take on the gunner's duties. The commander sat in the turret on the right-hand side and had his own cupola with a machine gun. Section 4. Armor Being lower than the M60 gun tank would give the M70 a higher chance of survival on the battlefield, as it would be less likely to be hit. It also meant a lighter and more maneuverable tank, but it still needed armor. The result was that the M70 was to be made out of aluminum. This, in turn, would keep the overall weight down to 20 to 25 tons. Section 5. Suspension The suspension for the M70 was a two-stage system, with the tracks and road wheels divided in half and connected together via a single leaf spring, holding them to a beam which ran the full length along each side. Each of these beams was then connected by a pivot arm at the front and back of the tank to a connector on the opposite side. The hull itself was not mounted directly to these track units, but held via coil springs from each end of the beam instead. Only the driving axles for the sprockets would directly link the hull to the track units. This double spring system was felt to provide maximum comfort. Small road wheels would spread the weight of the tank along its track and also serve to keep the overall height of the vehicle low. Conclusion during the 1960s, faced with the enormous growth and power of anti-tank guided missiles, many were speculating it meant the end of the conventional tank. Likewise, the potential for anti-tank guided missiles outstripped the anti-armor potential for large caliber guns, with the advantage of being significantly smaller and lighter. Many countries would consider and even develop anti-tank guided missile-based tanks during the Cold War, 
but just like the U.S., they were constrained by budgets, thinking, and a conservative attitude of trying to keep developments relatively simple. The M70 offered superior firepower to the M60 in a much smaller vehicle, but in 1962 this gun-launched missile concept was already underway in the M551 Sheridan. It was never to work satisfactorily for that tank, and the M70 offered little to warrant development. That is all for this article. If you would like to help us continue expanding our website, please consider subscribing and donating through Patreon or PayPal. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, and our community Discord server. Lastly, please visit our website, where we will be publishing new articles on the regular. Until next time, keep us in your sights.